Hi everyone, and welcome to Mike Likes Robots. Today we're going to be continuing to talk about Greengrass. In previous videos, I showed how to deploy components using Greengrass onto a computer, and how to build Greengrass components using Java and Python. Today, I want to show how to deploy Docker images using Greengrass, including using Docker Compose to put up multiple images at the same time. Let's take a look at Docker and Docker Compose. This is the Getting Started page for Docker, which I'll link in the description below. Docker is a way of bundling up dependencies with a software application so that you can just deploy it as one blob onto a target computer and run it as it is, which makes it a lot easier than, for instance, creating a Python application that you then have to tell your customer how to install all the dependencies for, as well as installing Python. You just make sure they install Docker and then run the image as a container and everything will just work. This next page is for Docker Compose, which used to be a separate tool that was often installed alongside Docker. It's now been included into the normal Docker installation as another command. So instead of Docker dash compose, it's Docker space compose. What this does is reads in a configuration file with a number of images, networks, volumes, and all of the other Docker functionality and allows you to run that entire suite of images and containers all in one command. It's really useful for managing a set of applications all at the same time. We can use Docker and Docker Compose to put up several containers at the same time on our target system, all by deploying one component. Let's take a look at a sample repository and how to set it up so that we can deploy multiple containers at the same time. To show the sample repository working, I've created a new EC2 instance where all I've done is install Greengrass. Everything else we'll be doing from scratch together. So first, we're going to clone the sample repository. I'll give the link to the repository in the description, but we're just going to git clone it, and then we'll open it up inside VS Code. Now, all the instructions for building the code inside this repo are in the readme, and we'll be following through. There's two main folders in the project. There's components and Docker. Components is to contain green grass components, and Docker is to contain Docker images. One component can reference multiple Docker images, which is why they're built separately. At the moment inside Docker, all we have is Python Hello World. This is a simple application that subscribes to an MQTT topic through Greengrass and then publishes messages to the same topic to make sure that that communication is working. We also have in the components folder the com.docker.python hello world Greengrass component. This contains a Docker Compose file that references Python hello world. So let's take a look at how to build and publish the repository, and then we'll take a deeper dive into the source code to see how it all links together. To build this component, we'll first use this list of requirements and make sure they're all available. So is the AWS CLI available? We can do AWS dash dash help and see that it's giving us a help message. So that is available. Is the GDK available? GDK help also works. Do we have JQ? We do. Do we have Docker? Docker run hello world is already working. And finally, do we have Docker compose? That is working. Now, as I mentioned, there are two versions of the Docker compose command. This instance is running Docker compose as a separate script, which is why it's Docker dash compose but there is also the Docker Compose plugin for more recent versions of Docker where you would use Docker space compose. It appears I have both versions on my system, but this source code is already set up to use Docker dash compose, so I will continue to use that. So with that out of the way, we can proceed to the setup section. In the setup section, it specifies a couple of extra policies that we need to make sure our green grass token exchange role has access to. That's because when we build the Docker image and we publish to a private repository, whatever we deploy to needs to have permission to pull that image from the private repository. That's what this first policy is for. In the same way, if we build a zip file for a Greengrass component and we push it up into S3, wherever we deploy to needs to have permission to get that zip file, to get the object. So first we're going to go into the console and make sure that those permissions are already set up. Inside the browser, we'll head to the IAM console and go to roles. I'll set Greengrass and use the token exchange role. 
And here we can see I've got a policy called ECR access with the ECR policy from before. And I also have the access component bucket policy, which has the S3 get object. If I didn't have these policies, I could add permissions by creating an inline policy, going to the JSON editor, and then pasting in the example policy from the readme. But as I've got them, I'll cancel this action and carry on. The next step is to make sure the Elastic Container Registry has a repository for our new Docker image. Because we're specifying the name as Python Hello World, and that's because the folder name is Python Hello World, we need to make sure that that repository exists. So we're back to the console to make sure that repository exists. We can search for ECR, open the Elastic Container Registry service, and here we've got Python Hello World as a repository. If this didn't exist, well, we could click Create Repository, specify private, give it a name of Python Hello World, this gives me an error because it already exists, and then leave everything else the same. This process would need to be repeated for every Docker image that is added to the Docker folder. Now, the last step from this Elastic Container Registry step is that we need our ECR repo. We can find that by going back into the console and copying our URI here. Now, we need to put it inside the .env file. That's what the instructions say to use, so we'll go into .env and replace me. However, for the base URI, we don't want this Python hello world. So we're going to strip that off. And that's our setup complete. Now to build all of our Docker images and Greengrass components, we just need to run this build all script. So let's run that now. Here it's building the Docker image with our sample application. And it's complete. And it's built our Greengrass component as well. Now, the idea of this script is that it will go into each subfolder of components and of Docker images, and for each intern, it will run a build script, which means to add a new Docker image, all we have to do is create another folder within Docker with the correct files inside. And to create a new Greengrass component, again, we create a new folder within the components folder with all of the files that we need. And we'll look at what one of those folders looks like. However, now we've built, we should be able to publish. Now, to publish our Docker images and our Greengrass components, we just need to run this publish all script. And we can see from this script that the uh, Docker image has been pushed and the Greengrass component failed to push because a version exists already with this version number. So if this happens, let's say we're iterating on our Greengrass component and we want to bump it to a new version, what we can do is go inside the GDK config, up the version number, and then rebuild and republish. And with that, we've created a new version of the Greengrass component. Now that we've published the Docker image and the Greengrass component, we should be able to deploy them to a target. As I've said, I've installed Greengrass on the system, so we should be able to deploy to the same system. So let's head back to the console and trigger that deployment. I'm here in the Docker Compose demo Greengrass core device that I've created for this video. And inside here, I can go to the deployments tab and select the deployment and then revise that deployment. Now from within the select components tab, I have available this com.docker.python hello world. I can tick that to make sure it's installed. And now the version is set to 100, but I've just created a new version 101. So I can update that by ticking it and click configure component and then select the latest version here. With that, I can click deploy again and then head back into VS Code. Now to see it working, there's a few different ways. We can use the Greengrass CLI to subscribe to topics and check that those messages are being published. We could use the debug console, which is a great tool for looking at different component configurations and MQTT topic published and subscribe, among other functionality. Or we can just look at logs to confirm to ourselves that it's working. So that's what I'll do in this video, is just look at the logs to confirm it. But feel free to run this for yourself and try a couple of those other methods to see if you can get them working. So to check the logs, all I need to do is open it inside a code editor or tail it, and I'm going to use Vim to open it up.
And here, if we look through the logs, we can see receive new message, which means that it received a message it has published itself, and successfully published 1,000 messages. That means that our permissions are all set up to be able to publish and subscribe to MQTT topics locally, and our Docker image has been successfully pulled and run. Now that we've seen the component functioning, let's take a closer look at the source file so we can understand how to extend it or to construct new Greengrass components or Docker images. We'll start inside the Docker image. Inside this folder, we have local pubsub and test local pubsub. And that's because it's taken from a template provided by Greengrass for doing local pubsub using Python. A lot of that source code is the same. But one thing that's changed is that it's using environment variables instead of command line arguments. That's because they're easier to pass through the Docker compose file. So if you're writing something to go inside a Docker image, prefer using environment variables to command line arguments. Otherwise, this code is the same. Everything inside local pubsub and test local pubsub is identical. We also have a Docker file with instructions of how to build the Docker image. It specifies the environment variables that are going inside the Docker file. And it specifies how to put that source code into an image. So using the Python Docker file as a base, copy all the code in, and then set an entry point for what we start running when the container starts up. We also have build.shell, which is what's called by the buildall.shell script. And all it does is using the ECR repo environment variable, it builds the right tag for our ECR repo. The publish.shell is very similar. It automatically signs into the ECR repo so that we have permission to push, and then pushes that ECR repo. So that's just because in the .n file, that is set. And when we run build all, it sources that environment file ready for us to use in our build scripts. If we wanted to extend this, we could copy this folder and paste it with a new name. Now, if we build this, we wouldn't be able to push it because we don't have an ECR repository for it. But that's a simple way that we can start to construct extra Docker images. Now we'll take a look at components. And within components, we're using this com.docker.python hello world. Greengrass build and zip build are created by the Greengrass development kit, which is what we're using to build this component. We've seen before this GDK config. All this is doing is specifying the author and the version, as well as the build system we're using and where we're going to upload artifacts to. The reason we're using a build system of zip is that we can have the Docker compose file and any other files that we want to add in that support it. There are no other files in this case, but if we want to extend this or create other components that extend it, then that's a useful way of us adding extra files in. So we create a zip containing docker compose.yaml. The build.shell is doing a little extra work, and that's because within our docker compose file and within our recipe, we need to reference the ECR repo. So what this script is doing is overwriting every reference to the ECR repo with our environment variable. Then it's running the build, and then it's resetting that environment variable back with the placeholder. That means we can git ignore these build folders and our source files will remain the same as they were when we started. Now, the more important part of this Greengrass component is that we have a Docker compose file which specifies a number of images. And they can come from the private ECR repo where this placeholder is replaced with our ECR repo, or it can be a public image. So we could, for instance, specify that we're using SQL. And then when we run this on a target system, it will pull that image published by SQL and run it with our arguments. This is an easy way for us to combine private Docker images with public Docker images and running multiple at the same time working together. We also have inside this recipe, we have a number of placeholders that are replaced by the Greengrass development kit. We have our configuration that specifies the topics we're allowed to publish and subscribe to. And the most important part is that we need to reference every Docker image that we're using within the Docker Compose. So we need our zip file containing our Docker Compose file, and we need this URI to say, we need to pull this Docker image. So for every private Docker image that we create, we need to add a line here that allows us to pull it when we deploy the component. Finally, the run part of the lifecycle is to run the Docker Compose file using Docker Compose. 
but with a couple of arguments which set our environment variables. This is how we're using Greengrass configuration to set those environment variables. We're passing them in as environment variables using the run script, where those environment variables come from our default configuration. This means that someone deploying our component can easily change the message and the topic. Although if they do, they'll have to change the permissions as well. And that's all we need to see from this sample repository. We've seen that it contains Greengrass components containing Docker Compose files and a number of private Docker images. We can then build and push our own Docker images to a private ECR repository, and we can use Greengrass components to run Docker Compose to use any and all of our privately built Docker images or publicly available Docker images. Given our setup, we should be able to deploy public or private Docker containers all working together. You can start to see how we can extend this to robot software. We could deploy ROS2 containers and start to implement all of our ROS2 code into their own container that can all communicate with each other and deploy using Greengrass. This method of deployment gives us all the advantages of Greengrass, such as a more reliable mechanism for deployment, including rollback, and being able to add other components like a log manager, while also making it easier to talk to the AWS cloud and get access to IoT functionality. Give the repository a clone and try it for yourself. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next one.